So welcome back friends. We have a big problem today. We are in the midst of a massive ice storm. This area in particular, for some reason, about every two or three years, uh, gets a, um, these crazy ice storms. It's, it's not snow, it's, it's not what typically what you see anywhere else. I don't know if it's the, just the relationship to the Pacific Ocean and the Cascade Range, but what happens is the weather drops down to about 24, 28 degrees or so, and then it starts raining, and everything gets covered with this bulletproof layer of ice from all the tree branches, the power lines, the roads. Right now, it's raining on me, but as we're looking around, we're starting to build up on the ground here. I can see a half inch, half inches of solid ice. It shuts down everything with that, unless you have ice chains or some really capable vehicles, you can't even go anywhere. The schools are shut down, all of the local businesses are shut down. So I wanted to share with you uh, a hack that I came up with years ago that will help you to be like a superhero <laughs> on ice because you still need to get around and falling down on the ice is is uh man it can be really really dangerous you can get really really hurt so there's still jobs that need to be done here in the homestead i'm going back and forth and i came out today and i almost wiped out so i'm going to take you in the shop and show you my ice cleat rubber, my boot ice cleat hack i want to show you just how bad it is this is the driveway and maybe you can see there I can focus on there everything is covered by a half inch of ice. And what makes it bad, this is the worst possible driving conditions in the entire world because it freezes hard, because the ground is cold and it's raining and now you have a layer of water on the top. It's absolutely treacherous and it continues to, to melt and to build up and build up and you, you're just stuck. You can't go anywhere with it. I'm gonna demonstrate just how, how difficult it is just to, tr just, just to try to walk up a, a, a slope, <laughs> you can see, it. <laughs> uh, with r just normal like rub rubber boots on. That's that's how that's that's how, how slippery it is. Let's go fix that. <laughs> All right, are you ready for the hack? It's simple. You need twelve of these little screws right here. These quarter inch. They take a regular screw, the little machine screw, little panel screws, I forget the, the name of them, but you have to have this one. You can get these at any hardware store. It's a, it'll, it's a quarter inch socket will fit it or a flat baited screwdriver. Now that's the important part right there. You don't want to overlook. You can get them like this one right here. That's not the right one. I don't know how that slipped in there, but you want the ones that have the little flat slot for the screwdriver because they... They have a little ridge around the outside of them and they've got more surface area and those little those little ridges in that portion that sticks up proud, it really, really bites. So you want 12 of these and the configuration is really, really important too. And this, I've tried all different ways of doing it and this is what seems to work best. You're gonna put two up front, right? Two up front towards the toe. Now look at your shoes, look at some shoes maybe that you have that are, that that have been worn down that you've worn for some time and kind of take a look and see where are the wear marks on them. You know, if you pronate or do different things or have a bit of a different gait, you can use that to kind of adjust it. And the heavy wear areas, that's where you want to put your these screws in here for the best traction. Um, and that way you're not putting in some place portion of the shoe where you don't put any weight. So that will help you. So you want four up front, two on the front right there. That's where you, when you're, you're bending your toe in where you're getting your, your grip, that's where you start the, the, the start your, uh, your foot, your, your, uh, your tread. And then you, as you rock back here, you'll put two here on the outsides, right about the ball of your foot is a good spot. Now over here on the back side, then you take the, the remaining ones and you do two on the heel back here on the outsides. Now that will help you your feet from coming out from underneath of you when you're slipping uh, or when you're going downhill. It wouldn't even be a bad idea to put a third one right there. I just haven't found it necessary. Six screws, 12 total, six in each boot is perfect. Now don't go inside the house with these. You'll you tread on your uh, wife's new wooden floor, and you won't she won't be happy. So I recommend doing this to a boot that is a slip-on type of a boot, like these these hateful muck <laughs> muck boots or UGG boots or whatever they call these things. They're fine boots. They're really handy. They're they're waterproof and they're super popular with uh, with people that live in the country. And I understand that. that's why I use them. I just don't care for the fit. I, I don't like a boot that flops around, you know, the fireman boot style of, 
it, I, I like a good fitting boot, but it's such a drag to undo all the laces and all that. So something like this, you can do this to your Romeos or whatever. They'll last about two seasons. Um, and if one falls out, you screw one in, not a big deal. Uh, and you can take them out really simple for the summertime. These seem to last, um, last really good. So that's the configuration. Let's take it outside and see how it goes. Are you ready to see the difference? All right, check it out. Same ice. Uphill, downhill. Downhill is a little, be careful. You want to make sure you uh, keep those knees bent and remain those cat-like reflexes. But, uh, but you can get around with the cleats in this configuration really well, no problem. And it's just a lot safer. It's just an easy fix and it just works, works so good. Now, even over here, I'll, I'll sh even everywhere you step, you can see where it's just cleating up the ice. And usually these will last about, for me, last about two winters or so. The screws will fall out or something, but it's easy. It's easy fix, of course. I forgot to mention the length you want, just get the half inches, just the little ones. That way you don't have to worry about them coming up into the shank or poking you in the foot. They're, most boots should have plenty of rubber that half inch will suit you well. So let's, uh, let's put the wooden shoes on and see if there's any truth in that. I'm not sure what the Dutch know about ice. I don't think it snows there, does it? These are my official Dutch wooden shoes. I was shocked when I went there and I saw guys that were working in the uh, windmills wearing these things. Did you know in, in uh, some countries they're, they're considered a safety shoe? Like a, like a steel toe shoe would be in, uh, in America? So let's see, so if the, if the Dutch happen to find themselves in a, in a Pacific Northwest ice storm, would they be able to get around? I'd say the verdict is still out as to whether these are ever going to gain traction and popularity in the, in the States. I kind of doubt it. M Mrs. W tried to talk me into wearing them home on the airport and I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. All right, so already they feel kind of sticky. All right, so let, let's see here. See if we can do this without wipe, wiping out here. Now, you guys are in luck. You just don't get content like this on, yeah, on any other channel on YouTube. This is a first here. Okay, so they're surprisingly sticky. They, oh, they actually work. They're sticky. Um, they're soaking in some water. They're getting wet, but they're... They really do work. They, I wouldn't. I don't know that they're as good as the, as the uh, studded snow boots, but they're not bad. <laughs> That's amazing, huh? Maybe we need wooden tires. Wooden tires. I don't know how well that would go over. Hey, let me show you the Huckapolitas. The what? the best snow tires, winter tires in the world. Uh, if you're buying them uh, or uh, for your vehicle, I would highly, highly recommend them. Everyone around here has been running them. It's almost like cheating. You don't, it almost gives you, a, gives you a false sense of security when you're on icy roads because you just don't know it. Perfect example, so the van is two wheel drive. Um, uh, Brian and I were heading down to firefighting training uh, and he's got a four wheel drive Toyota that just had kind of an aggressive mud tire on it. He went around a corner and lost the whole rear end and spun out and, and he was in four wheel drive uh, and I was uh, right, I saw him behind me. I was right in front of him and I just railed right through there. I didn't even know it was slippery running these Huckapolitas. So uh, let me show them to you. 